Hey, welcome to APC Brampton TV. I'm Moses Khan, the discipleship pastor here. I'm so glad you're able to tune in. I hope that you are incredibly blessed as you do so. Listen, if you are in the area, check us out at allpeopleschurch.ca to get location details. And if you want to give and support our ministry, you can do so online as well. Well, I hope you're ready and excited to get into the Word of God. Let's do this. Thank you for being here at All People's Church. You could have been so many other places, but I I thank God and I want to thank you for uh, being with us tonight and celebrating with us tonight. This is a historic night for All People's Church because at midnight, we actually move into not just the new year, but we move into uh, the year of Jubilee, our 50th anniversary our 50th year of existence and we are so thankful uh, and we are thankful that um, that you are here I really believe I have a, a word from the Lord tonight I want to break it up into two parts really uh, the first part I want to talk about this this whole uh, concept of Jubilee and what it means from the concept of the Word of God and the aspect of the Word of God and then I, I, I want to bring a, a passage uh, that really I believe the Lord has laid upon my heart for 2018 and, and ushering in the, the, new, uh, the new era, the new season and our 50th year of Jubilee and celebration. But, but before I do that, thank you uh, Brother Dave Brown for being with us. Uh, really uh, appreciate you, appreciate you being with us. I, I thought you were going to actually preach my message there. I was just going to go, go ahead, sing, preach, do it all, you know, like make it all make it all happen but really uh, appreciate you and I, as as he was playing and singing you know my friends there there isn't a faith on the entire earth that is a singing celebrating faith like christianity uh, christianity is just full of song and sound and celebration it's a i believe a reflection of what heaven sounds like and and i believe that many of the songs that people receive are actually birthed in heaven uh, we have had people that have visited heaven and said they have uh, heard songs in heaven and then were written down here uh, and sung on the earth. So my friends, I, I believe that many times we are singing songs that, um, that angels are singing. And, and you know that when we worship and we sing, there are angels all around us worshiping God with us uh, tonight. And the Bible says that, that they, they desire to see the things that we see they desire the salvation that that we have and and uh, you know the angels must look at us and go you know God we don't get it why you're interested in these humans hmm? but how many know that God is more than interested in us he loves us he died for us he gave his life for us amen well my friends I want to start tonight with a little story you're gonna hang with me there Michael my bro bless your heart I um I want to tell you a story about this little tray. Is that what you would call this, a little tray? Probably is actually not worth much, but has tremendous value to me. And I want to tell you about this little tray because I've been staring at this tray in my kitchen now for about a year and a half. Every day I look at it, every day it really, uh, it speaks to me because there is a story behind this tray. I want to share it with you because there's a story in what I want to, st to share with you tonight. Uh, about a year and a half ago, maybe two years, I think it was last Christmas, um, or maybe just a little bit before that actually, my, my mom had gone back to Toronto to visit with, some, uh, with her neighbor, where we used to live many years ago. And, you know, they began to talk about uh, the fact that I wanted an espresso machine. And in all these years that I've been alive, and for all the years that I've been alive, I've been Italian. I haven't changed that in all the years I was alive. Um, but I never owned an espresso machine. I always had that stovetop little little unit there. I kind of liked it better. And um, anyway, they began to talk, and, and my, my mom's neighbor said to my mother, you know what? She said, I have a, an older machine here. Why don't you bring this to your son? She knows who I am. Why don't you bring it to your son? And, and I'm sure that he could, you know, enjoy the espresso machine. And so uh, along with the espresso machine came this little tray. 
Now, for those of you that wonder why is this tray part of the espresso machine, well, when you're making an espresso, sometimes when the, um, when the espresso machine is done, it, it, will, it will drip a little bit. And so when, uh, you know, when it drips a little bit, you could put the tray under it, and so it just catches the last bit of, uh, you know, of drops. If you're really desperate, you can drink it right out of here. It just depends how bad your addiction really is. Uh, I've thought about it a few times, but then... Carolyn was home. All right, so, so along with this machine comes this little tray. And I didn't make much of it, and I made, I think, one, maybe two espressos, and the machine stopped working. It was an older machine. It was, so, it was really well built, but it stopped working. Um, but this tray was, was still there. And uh, not shortly after that, but Pastor Fanu, those of you that know him, I think I, if I, if I, I think I see him right over here. Pastor Fanu and Trisha came, and as a Christmas gift, they, they actually bought me an espresso machine. Not even knowing that I was looking for an espresso machine and, at, at that time. And so now, now I had an espresso machine with this little tray. But my friends, here's the story behind this little tray. You see, many, many years ago, I don't even know how many years ago, this tray actually belonged to my grandmother. True story. Gone on to be with the Lord. This is my mom's mom. And one day as they were having coffee and having espresso, as Italian ladies do, she noticed that her machine was dripping. She said, you know, Teresa, that was the lady's name. I have just the thing for you. She said, I have this little tray at home. I'm going to go and I'm going to get it and I'm going to give it to you. And so she gave it to this lady when the when the machine came believe it or not and the machine came back with the tray the lady Teresa said to my mom your mom gave me this so many years ago and I'm gonna can you imagine that she had kept it you know something like I say is is probably doesn't have much worth but tremendous value and so she gave it to my mom and it ended up Back in my house, the, the machine that was actually thought to be the, the thing of value died. But this little tray is still operating in my, in my home, in my kitchen. We, we use it with the new machine. It, it, it picks up the, the, you know, the little droplets after the, the coffee is done. And I kid you not, my friends, almost every day I look at this thing and this thing speaks to me. And my friends, here's what I want you to know tonight, that there are times in our lives when we are looking for things, but I want you to understand and know tonight that there are things that are looking for you. There are things that are looking for you. There are inherited things, things that belong to your heritage, things that belong to your lineage, things that are part of your inheritance and part of your call that you are so desperately looking for. And when we're talking about Jubilee, I just want to tell you prophetically that in 2018, you're going to experience that there are some things, maybe even some people that are looking for you. You may not even be looking for them. You may not even understand where it's coming from, but I'm telling you the plan of God is going to be released in your life in 2018 because there are things that are looking for you. Destiny is looking for you. Assignment is looking for you. And the Lord has given me a, a passage, a very well-known passage for 2018 out of Jeremiah 29, 11. You, you probably all know it. You can probably quote it by heart. But here's, the, here's the, the scripture the Lord gave me for 2018. For I know, the Lord says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. I don't know tonight if you understand that God thinks thoughts towards you. As a matter of fact, there are so many thoughts, the Bible tells us, that they outnumber the sand of the world. Think about it. Think about it. Every, every beach. Think about every golf course. Think about anywhere that you would find sand. Here's what God says. When I think about you, my thoughts outnumber all, all the grains of sand on the earth. So my friends, I never think that God doesn't know you, that God doesn't think about you. He doesn't know what's happening in your life. He says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, and they are numerous. And friends, they are good thoughts. Look what he says. He says, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. A future and a hope. 2018 
I believe is going to be a year of refreshed and abundant hope. A future. Listen, God always leaves the best for last. If you go into the, the wedding of, of, of Cana of Galilee, even when they, they said, you have, left, you have left the best wine for last. When I say to people, your best days are ahead of you, that's a biblical principle because God always leaves the best for last. It's not a cliche, it's a biblical principle. Now does that mean, pastor, I'm not going to have any problems. I didn't say that. Pastor, I'm not going to have any issues. I'm, I didn't say that. As a matter of fact, he said this to a people that were about to go into bondage into Babylon because he had, they had disobeyed God. But look at the heart of God. If God can give these people a word like this that have disobeyed him, can you imagine what he has planned for you and I that we're the apple of his eye. He loves us. He has great plans and desires for us. He says, then you will call upon me and go and pray to me. And I will listen to you. So not only is Father thinking about you, He's listening to you, your, your cry. Your cry. You know, this morning, interestingly, right before I preached in the second service, I had a prophetic word from Michael. Later on in the day, he texted me and he said, Pastor, he said, it's just been such a rough week. He said, you know, I, I just began to pray. I began to press into God. I said, God, I need to hear a clear word. And then right in the service today, doesn't God speak to him? And he, he said to me in capital letters, your word was exact. My friends, I want you to know something. God is listening to you. He's got good hearing. You don't even have to shout. Sometimes all we have is a whisper. Sometimes all we have is a groan. Sometimes, sometimes we don't even know how to, how to formulate words to our, to our feelings. And I want you to know God's listening. He says, you're going to call upon me. You're going to pray to me and I'm listening. And then he says, and you will seek me and find me when you search for me with part of your heart. Come on, 98%. 98% is pretty good. No, he says all of it, 100%. When, when, when you get serious, when you begin to search for me, seek me out, make me a priority. Matthew 6 and 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and what? Then all these things shall be added unto you. My friends, I want you to know prophetically that 2018 is a year where God becomes first in your life. There, 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 there needs to come an order. There needs to come an order that some things that have you've been chasing, some things that you've been seeking, that sometimes we even place before God. God has said, make it a year of order. Make it a year where I am truly your priority. Not just about lip service. Not just about words and cliches, but, but actually make it a reality. And, and let's begin to switch our priorities. Let's begin to change the things that, that we are seeking. And you may say, well, pastor, if I don't seek those things, I'm never going to get them. Listen, there are things looking for you. Let the blessing of God overtake your life. Listen, don't chase money. Let money chase you. Because I guarantee you by the word of God that if you will seek God and the face of God, then everything that is in the hands of God will be released to you. God wants to release it to you, but we got to get life in order. And then he says this, talking about Jubilee, talking about the 50th year, talking about something that the, 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 the nation of Israel followed the principle of God. Seven sevens, seven years of seven is 49 years. And the 49th year was to be a year of rest. And then on the 50th year, some amazing things were to happen. And I'll, I'll talk to you about it in just a moment. But when Jesus Christ arrives on the scene, on the day that he went into the synagogue, his place of worship, and the Bible says that he, he picked up the scroll and he begins to read and he begins to read out of Isaiah and he begins to speak about himself. I want you to notice what he says. says and, and, and as he was handed the book of the prophets, Isaiah, and as he opened the book and he found the place where it was written, here's the words that are spoken about him. He says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. 
and he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted and to proclaim liberty to the captives and the recovery of sight to the blind to set at liberty those that are oppressed to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord or another way that we can say it is to proclaim the year of jubilee of the Lord the year of freedom the year of deliverance and then he says this scripture has today been fulfilled in your ears my friends we need to come back to the Word of God we need to come back to the purity of the Christian faith we need to come back to his presence we need to come back to intimate relationship and fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ in 2018 my friends we need to come back so that when we gather as a church but when we go to our workplaces, when we're in our homes, when we're in our communities, that, that these aren't just words on a screen that we amen to, but the reality is that we are living out these words in our everyday lives. The liberty in our lives first, but then the liberty in the lives of those around us because my friends, lives are broken lives are destitute listen listen people look so well put together but it doesn't take very long for you to look under the hood can I just say it that way it doesn't take very long to begin to have a conversation with someone and if they will trust you enough just to open up their hearts to you for just one moment you will be rocked with what people are going through I just read an article about a a well-known uh, yoga instructor and the title of the R, uh, the title of the article was inner peace inner turmoil and you know what had happened this man had taken his own life a, a, a leader in inner peace and teaching people about yoga and you know how to connect with yourself and connect all that that kind of stuff in order to bring you into peace and tranquility but at the end of the day my friends there was something that was happening on the inside that all the yoga and all the weirdness that goes on with it wasn't enough to bring this man true peace at the end of the day he had to take his own life my friends let me ask you a question as a believer tonight what's happening on the inside not on the outside we we dress well we look well you know we we, we want to come across like everything's great someone asks us hey how are you oh, I'm doing great are you or that has become the cliche hasn't it but what's happening in the inner man in the inner woman what's happening on the inside where where your true being where your true core is what's happening there because my friends that's where Christ wants to come and bring you liberty and bring you peace and not only bring you life but bring you abundant life prophet Terry some of you know him some of you don't but prophet Terry FaceTimed me from Australia do you know it's already the new year there he called me, I said to him, what time is it? He said, it's 9 o'clock in the morning, bro. Happy New Year. I said, well, it ain't Happy New Year here, but, but he's already, because on the other side of the world is, is Happy New Year. And we, we began to talk a little bit about life and abundant life. And you know what he said to me? He said, you know, Pastor, he said, many times God's people experience life, but they don't experience abundant life. I said, well, prophet, why do you think that is? And he, he brought me into the Old Testament. And, you know, in the Old Testament, there was a, a place called Elam. And, and Elam was a place of oasis and palm trees. It was, a, it was, it was almost like the Garden of Eden on the earth. And, and everybody wanted to come to Elam. It's a place of refreshing. It's a place of expectation and great things. But you know what the amazing part is? In order to get to Elam, you had to go through a place called Mara. Mara is the bitter place. And my friends, many times the reasons that people are not reaching Elam is because they refuse to deal with Mara. They, they refuse to deal with the bitterness sometimes that's in their heart. The, the attitudes, the, the things that are troubling us and holding us down. And, 
and, and instead of going on to Elam, we kind of want to camp out and we, we, we live in a place called Mara. We live in a place called bitterness. And so we might have some life, but we don't have abundant life. Jesus said, listen, he said, the devil has come to kill, to steal, and destroy. But he said, I have come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. Listen, God's desire for you and me is not just to have life, but to have abundant life in every area, in every aspect of who we are. So this idea, this concept of Jubilee happened every 50 years. Do you know, I don't know if you know this, but the, the Jewish calendar is different. We, we follow the Roman calendar, but in the Jewish calendar, uh, the year is actually 5778. Do you know that in, in uh, the whole Jewish Bible and in the, in the whole Jewish faith, every letter has a number every letter has a number every number has a meaning so in the year 57 78 the number five is the number of grace the number seven is the number of perfection or completion also the number that is associated with god so you have two sevens double completion and then eight is the number of new beginnings they, they just celebrated their new year i believe it's in that november october time frame and this is the year that they're in forget 2018 if we look at it biblically we're in the year of grace we're in the year of double completion and we're in the year of new beginnings according to god's calendar and we're coming into the year of jubilee i, I want to just say this to you I, I know the lord spoke to me around the time that we had the banquet we we just saw some incredible breakthroughs in 2017 and but in that in that banquet time i just saw some things happening i remember i was praying and the lord said to me this is the beginning of uncommon favor that is a coming upon the people of god listen my friends I, i'm not trying to I'm, I'm not trying to be popular here i'm not trying to puff you up i'm just telling you what i've heard god say that there are going to be some things that are going to happen in your life this year it's going to be supernatural it's going to be unnatural it's going to be uncommon some things are returning to your life my friends some things that you think hey that doesn't have a lot of worth listen my friends not everything of value has worth Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be expensive for things to matter so much to you. At the end of the day, I threw away that machine. But this little tray, this little tray, I'll be keeping this tray. When my new machine dies, I'm going to be keeping this tray. I'm going to call Pastor Fanu and say, Pastor Fanu, the machine just died. Maybe in his good heart, he'll bring another one. But the tray, you just see how I just subtly threw that in there? But the tray shall remain. And I'll tell you, anytime you'll, you'll be at my house, if you're there and I make you an espresso, I guarantee you, you're going to see this tray because it has returned to my, to my life. I, I never even knew it existed. I never even knew the story behind it. I never knew the lineage. But my friends, there are things that belong to you. You don't even know they belong to you. But I want you to know God knows where they are. And they are coming back. This year of Jubilee, people are coming back. So what the Jubilee is about in the 50th year, what would happen is that, is that property would be restored to people. In other words, they maybe had to sell it. They had to give it away. But in the 50th year, the Bible tells us that all the property was returned to its rightful owners. And not only was the property returned, but, but debts were forgiven. Can you imagine? Can you imagine today if we did this, if we said, that's it, all your debts, all your mortgages, all your visa bills, come on, some of you would lose your minds, all your MasterCards, all your loans, everything forgiven. That's the 50th year. That's God's economy. My friends, can I tell you something? If we actually followed biblical economy, there would be no poverty on the face of the earth. But we allow greed to rule the day. Deaths were forgiven. But, but you know what was amazing in the, in the 50th year? By the way, do you know that Israel is actually celebrating right now a double jubilee? They're, they're in their 100th anniversary. 
the, the nation right now. Isn't it amazing that in the hundredth year, in the, in, the, in the double jubilee, whatever you think of President Trump, but here is a man that has come and said, this is the capital of the nation of Israel in the double jubilee year. Don't tell me God doesn't talk. Don't tell me God doesn't make things happen. And, and you watch. I just, I just, I laugh my head off. You know, you can look at the Psalms and the, the Bible said, why do the nations rage? Why do they imagine a vain thing against God? Let me tell you, my friends, God has a plan. He has a purpose. It's going to happen. There isn't a devil. There isn't a demon. There isn't a prime minister. There isn't a president. There isn't an army that can stop the power of the living God. He's a mighty God. He's a mighty God. And so it says to me, nothing can stop God's plan and purpose for your life. Stop believing the lies. Stop believing the doubt. Stop believing the negativity. Stop believing that nonsense. I want you to know tonight that you are under an anointing of the year of Jubilee. This is our 50th year. Doesn't mean we're not going to have issues. We're not going to have trouble. Listen, it is the year of uncommon favor. But before you run out of here too happy, that's right, you need to receive it. You remember there's a, a man in the Old Testament, his name was Joseph. He got a coat from daddy. My friends, I want you to know sometimes that the favor of God is going to get you some negative attention. The favor of God comes with some trouble. It comes with people that don't always want to celebrate you and they're not always excited that daddy's blessing you. They're, they're not always thrilled that daddy's putting a, a coat of many colors around you. But my friends, it doesn't negate the fact that the favor of God and the love of the Father is on you. I still want God's blessing even though it may come with some trouble. I got to move on quickly. A little bit about who we are and some of the things I'm going to begin to unpack this year. This, this concept of abundant hope and a promised future. This, this concept of honoring our foundations. My friend, I want you to hear me tonight. I, I was going to show you a, a, a video tonight about the history of the church. and I don't know if you know this, but my wife, Carolyn, some of you may not know her. She is the great-grandchild of the founder of this church, or at least one of them. The grandchild? What did I call you, honey? Not great. You're not that old. All right. You're just, you're just a grandchild. Someday you'll be great. All right, but <laughs> you're great to me, baby. How's that? I better save myself here because I, I can feel me drowning. I can just feel it. God, help me now. Carolyn's grandfather had four, 13 children. One of them, yeah, they didn't get out of the house much. One of them was Carolyn's dad who passed away, drowned when Carolyn was just a young girl. And of the remaining 12, another one had passed away, but of the remaining 12, none of them, my friends, listen to me, none of them wanted the inheritance that God had for them. Some have returned to the Lord, many have not, are not serving God, but had other priorities in life and things they wanted to do and take care of. And so, isn't it amazing? So she's the first grandchild of the first son. And of all the 13 children, the mantle, the inheritance, the blessing, the thing that returned to Carolyn, it returned, that anointing, that mantle returned to the first grandchild. She had no idea when she married me that we, we, we met, I was 19 years old. She had no idea that when she married me, I would eventually become the pastor of this house. But because others despise the mantle, they despise the inheritance, they despise what God 
had for them. You say, Pastor, how did they despise it? Because other things were more important. Other things took priority. And the Lord said, that's fine. I'll go through the entire family. And until he came to the first grandchild and said, you will receive the inheritance. My friends, allow God to return some things to you. But will you prioritize? Will you prioritize in your hearts the things that God has for you that are, that are critical? Do you know there's a man actually two brothers Esau and Jacob do you know what God says about Esau he says Esau have I hated Jacob have I loved why did he hate Esau I can't I can't unfold the entire story but here's the the the, the short version of it he despised the birthright and he sold his birthright for stew he, he treated the things of God common. He said, what do I care about a birthright? I'm dying. I'm so hungry. Just give me the stew. And he sold his birthright. My friends, I want you to know today, there are so many people that are selling their birthright today. Maybe not for stew, but maybe they're selling it for sex. Maybe they're selling it for drugs. Maybe they're selling it for, for partying. Maybe they're, maybe they're selling it for quote unquote, their, their identity and their gender. There's all kinds of things they're selling it out for. But tonight, I want you to honor your birthright. Honor the inheritance. Honor the things that God has for you so that it can come back to you. I want to move forward. I want to talk about this story and then I'm going to close and we're going to celebrate. I want to talk about Luke 24. I want to talk about this idea that two disciples were on the road to Emmaus. Jesus had risen from the dead. Uh, they, they can't figure out what's going on. People have been to the grave. The, the women have seen Jesus. Mary had an encounter with him. They came back. And the Bible says, you know, Peter and John went down to investigate. Because honestly, they didn't believe Mary. They didn't believe the women. And the Bible says they went down. Here's these, these, two, these two men. The Bible says two of the disciples, actually let's read it together. Luke 24, 13, it says, Now behold, two of them were traveling that day to a village called Emmaus, which was seven miles from Jerusalem. And they talked together of all the things which had happened. And so it was that while they were conversing and reasoning, that Jesus drew near and went with them. But notice something, notice that their eyes were restricted. They were restrained. So the Bible says they did not know him. They didn't know it was Jesus. My friends, how many times in life we walk with God and we don't even know he's right beside us. It says, then one whose name was Cleopas answered and said to him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem? Have you not known the things which happened there these days? And he said to them, what things? So they said to him the things concerning Jesus of Nazareth. And, and so he, he, they begin to talk about, oh, he was a prophet and, and so on and so forth. And, and then the Lord begins to uh, speak to them. He says, you know, but we were hoping that it was he who was going to redeem Israel. Indeed, besides all this, today is the third day since these things have happened. In other words, they were saying, all our hope was on this man. And here we are today and we're more confused than ever. They said, you know, some of the ladies went down, they saw a vision of angels, and they said he was alive. And he said, and then some of the disciples in verse 24 went down there. But notice verse 24, it says this, but they did not see him. Did you hear what Dave Brown said? That, my friends, it is a year where we need our eyes to be opened. Look what he says. In verse 25, Jesus, after hearing all this discourse, he looks at them and he says to them, O oh, foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. My friends, as I was studying the Word, as I was reading this story, you know, I had to own this for myself. I had to say, God, forgive me, because so many times in life I am so foolish. 
I just don't get it. I'm so slow of believing. I'm so slow of heart. There's just times, Lord, I just don't get it. I just don't see you. My friends, listen, how is it that we are so able to see what the devil is doing that we can't see what God is doing? How come we're so keen on, here's what's evil, here's what's dark, here's what's wrong. How come we can't see through the eyes of the Spirit and say, God, here's what you're doing. Here's what you're working out. Here's what you're operating in my life. And then the Bible tells us here that Jesus began to open the, the Scriptures to them. And the Bible says this, in verse 29, it says, But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in and stayed with them. And now it came to pass that as he sat at the table with them, he took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. Now I want you to notice verse 31. It says, And then their eyes were open. Whoo! I'm telling you, church, 2018 is going to be a year when our eyes begin to open. Open to the things of God. Open to the things of the Spirit. But my friends, most importantly, open to Jesus Himself. Because the greatest revelation that you and I can have, the greatest thing that will return to us is not a tray or even an inheritance. The greatest thing that can return to us is a personal, intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. That we see him again with fresh eyes. That our eyes are open. Notice what they said. The Bible says, and they knew him. And he vanished from their sight. And then they said to one another, did not our heart burn within us? While he talked with us on the road. And while he opened the scripture to us. Listen my friends, you can read the Bible, but you need the Holy Spirit to open the scriptures to you. You can read it 24 hours a day. You can study it, memorize it, quote it by heart. But unless the Spirit of God gives us understanding, unless He opens the Scripture to us, unless He brings revelation to us, it's never going to make a hill of beans difference to us. As a matter of fact, without the revelation of the Spirit, the more you read this book, you know what's going to happen? You're only going to become more religious. We don't need any more religious people. God save us from religious people. God save us from, from people that have a form of godliness but deny the power thereof. Save us from people that look like they're like Jesus but in reality they're not. It's a year of transformation. It's, it's a year where change needs to happen to us on the inside. It is a year where we need to see, it is an amazing thing, my friends, that of all the miracles that Jesus did, you know, in quantity, Jesus healed people's blindness more than any other miracle or healing in the entire Bible. In other words, he helped them to see. He opened their eyes. He gave them that perception so that they could see from the lens of God. They could see from the filter of God and not just the things that were happening around them. Isn't it amazing? These two disciples lived with him for three and a half years. How is it they didn't know him when he walked right beside them and he talked with them? It was only when he broke the bread. The Bible says their eyes were open and then he vanished. And I love what they said. They said, didn't our hearts burn within us? Us. may it be a year where our hearts burn may it be a year where he opens the scriptures to us and my friends may we fall in love with the word of God once again may it be a year where we have such desperate hunger and such desire for the word of God that we will chase after God more than we chase after anything else that, that rather than, than magazines and blogs and articles and self help and even all these noble things that we can read wouldn't it be amazing my friends if there would just be such a hunger for the word of God in our lives I'm telling you your life would be revolutionized so the Bible says, the same hour they returned. They went back and they told the other disciples and they said, listen, we've seen the Lord. He is risen. 
He is resurrected. He is alive. He is well. Because my friends, I want you to know something. When you get a revelation of God, you just can't keep it to yourself. It's not about having a secret and just holding it to yourself. No, my friends, when you truly meet Jesus, you want to tell everybody else. And friends, it's a year. Listen, listen. It is a year to tell your story. It is a year to open your mouth. It is a year to give your testimony. It is, it is a year to give your life story and what God has done for you. You know, we want to go to Bible school. We want to go to this seminar and that seminar. Listen, my friends, there is nothing more powerful than your personal testimony, than your personal story with Jesus say listen here's what God here's what God did for us here's what God did for me so I've asked Dave to blow the shofar because you know part of the meaning of the word jubilee I don't know if you know this is actually it means trumpet because every time God ushered a new season Every time God ushered a new era, even when they went around the walls of Jericho, I want you to notice something. There was a sound associated in the book of Acts when the Holy Ghost filled the room, the Bible says, and there came a, a sound. It came a sound. And so we're going to blow the shofar because we're going to usher in the year of Jubilee. We're going to usher in the acceptable year of the Lord. And and I want you to put my PowerPoint back on. I want you to go to the very last slide because when Pastor Tony Foster was here, he made this statement in the midst of his preaching. Those of you that were here, he's, he's preaching. He was preaching about Abraham and Sarah, how the Lord visited them. And he said, by this time next year, by this time next year, he said, you're going to have the promise. You're going to have a son. My friends, what about your next time this year? What is it that God wants to birth in your life? What, what is it that God wants to open your eyes about? And where will you be? And what will you experience this time next year? So Brother Dave, as we all stand in the presence of the Lord, I just want you to begin, just to begin to blow that shofar. I want you to begin to make a sound to usher in the year the year of jubilee, the year of grace, the year of double completion, the year of new beginnings. Open our eyes, Lord. Open our eyes, Lord. Open our eyes, Lord. Oh, we declare it, God. We declare it, God. We declare it, God. It's a new year. It's a new year. It's a new year of your grace. It's a new year of your blessing. It's a new year of your favor. It's a new year, God, of your grace. Double, double jubilee. Double jubilee. Hey, hey. Come on, begin to lift up your voice. Begin to receive it. Begin to receive it in this place. Come on, begin to give glory to God. We receive it, Father. We receive it in this house. We receive it over every family. We receive it in the name of Jesus. Open our eyes. Cause our hearts to burn within us, God. This year of jubilee. This year of grace. This year of deliverance. This year of healing and of power and of the presence of the living God. Visit our homes. Visit our marriages. Visit our nation. Visit our workplaces, God. Yeah. Hey. Come on, somebody. Oh, give a shout. Give a shout to God. Make a joyful noise in the house of God tonight. We declare it. We believe it. We receive it. Oh, it's for your glory, Lord. You're going to do amazing things, God, this year. You're going to do amazing things. And we're going to worship you and bless you and honor you and glorify you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
God, we bring in the new year with praise. We bring it with your glory. We bring it with your presence. We thank you that you're here. Angels are here. Your spirit is here. Your power is here. Your glory is here. We love you, God. It's returning. It's returning. It's returning. It's returning. Oh, shout to God. Shout to God. Make a joyful noise. The year 5778 is here. The year of Jubilee. It's a new year. It's a new year. New hope. New possibilities. New revelation. In the name of Jesus, the impossible will be possible. God will be glorified in the nation, in your homes, in your families. Oh, we bless you, God. Oh, we bless you, God. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, to God be the glory. To God be the praise. Hallelujah. It's a new year. It's a new beginning. There's new hope. New hope. New hope. New hope. New hope. Eyes open. There's a new day. There's a new beginning in the Lord. In the Lord. Hallelujah. Our hearts are going to burn. Our hearts are going to burn. And the word is going to be open to us. And we're going to see the mighty hand of God move in our midst like never before. Hallelujah. And God, we need you. And we're calling upon you. We're calling upon you in this day and in this hour. God, that you would bless us. God, that you would watch over us as we glorify you. We thank you. We love you. There's coming a return. There's coming a liberty. Hallelujah. 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 Come on. Five, four, three, two, one. Happy New Year. Come on, let's celebrate in the presence of the Lord. Happy New Year. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Yeah. There's a freedom. There's a freedom in the house. There's a freedom in the house. Yeah.
Bye.